So I downloaded and played the Resident Evil 2 demo a couple of days ago. The last time I saw this game I was about 4 or so, and all I remember was how terrifying and nightmare inducing it was for me and my 3 older brothers who I watched play. I obviously couldn't play the game myself as I was too young and couldn't read a word bigger than house. The terrifying memories I had of this game led to some high expectations for the remake. You see, I'm a horror fan. Horror movies, horror games, horror serial, I love it all. I love the thrill of being put in a situation and being stressed out about survival and the daunting foes up ahead who want to eat your brains. A good jump scare is cool and all, but the best horror games go way beyond that. That's not to say I'm an expert on all horror games and all things scary, however still, after playing Resident Evil 2 Remake Demo, it doesn't seem like this game is going to live up to the expectations I personally set out for it, just like the recent horror games haven't. Now before anyone says anything, before I go any further, I understand that the demo is a 30 minute demo, well 20 minutes realistically. Not only is this only an iota of what to expect in a real game, but some of what I played is also subject to change. However, the gripes I have with this game aren't just necessarily only this game's problems. These are gripes that carried over from Resident Evil 7, and problems I have with the horror game genre as a whole recently. The games just aren't scary. Now, this is a very subjective topic, and a lot of you probably think I'm insane for thinking this depending on your own experiences. So allow me to explain my point of view. When I play a horror game, there are a couple of things I look for when I decide whether a horror game is good or not. One. How well does a horror game do at smoothing out the gameplay mechanics of the subgenre? 2. How frightening are the things that I'm actually fighting in the game? And 3. How much variety is there in the way that the game attempts to frighten me? So to explain each of the subjects I use to rate horror games, let's talk about one, which is basically how good the actual gameplay mechanics are in a horror game. Since most horror games tend to be shooters, and since the basis of this video is Resident Evil 2, those are the types we'll focus on. So the reason subgenre mechanics are important should be obvious. Those are the foundations of the game. The game can be as creepy or as scary as it wants. But if the aiming is bad or if the movement is bad, the annoyingness of the mechanics could easily overshadow how scary the game actually is. So it can become less of, oh my goodness this game is terrifying, and more of, holy cow, it's annoying that I can't even escape or kill anything because of the clunkiness of this game. Luckily, Resident Evil 2 doesn't have this problem. Most horror games like Dead Space, my personal favorite, or Silent Hill don't have this problem. However, there can be deeper problems within a game that aren't so obvious that make a game less terrifying. Take for example, how much damage a gun does, the types of guns you have, the amount of defensive options you have, how much space you have to carry items, things of this nature. One problem I've always had with Resident Evil was how much damage your gun does to enemies. Now for the most part a pistol does ideal damage, about 3 or 4 headshots kill from a pistol on a regular enemy in the remake, that's not bad at all, however, the shotgun can usually kill from one hit to the body. Now, that doesn't seem like a problem because you can't find much shotgun ammo just lying around on the map, however, there is an abundance of pistol ammo everywhere I looked. These are just 2 guns in Resident Evil 2, but if it's anything like Resident Evil 7, these would be the only 2 guns I need, except for special situations like boss fights, because you don't have to fight everything. Most zombies move pretty slow and are easy to manipulate and move past, or just straight up run past. So in situations where the developer may have wanted you to use some of the precious ammo you scavenged, you can just run right past slow monsters. Or you could just use a couple of bullets to knock down zombies or slow them down and run past. Now this makes sense to be able to do every once in a while because realistically, someone wouldn't kill every zombie they see. But I felt the situations I could do this in were happening way too often in Resident Evil 7 and the 30 minutes of Resident Evil 2 Remake I played. But Resident Evil 4 and earlier did a good job of was making you feel like you needed everything or you didn't have enough space for anything. And one of the reasons Resident Evil 2 and 7 don't feel like this is because of the inherent strength of the guns you have and the lack of things you actually have to kill. So for the most part, you have all the space you want for health items, key items, or extra guns if you feel like you need them. A huge problem I have with Resident Evil 7 that I think they took out of Resident Evil 2 Remake was the blocking and parrying system. That's just way too strong and if you were good at it, you didn't even need health items. Also in the Chris Redfield DLC at least, you didn't even need guns for some enemies because you could just block and knife people to death. Next let's talk about the reason number 2. 
how frightening the enemies in the game actually are. So a lot of things can go into this. One, the design of enemies. I actually have to be afraid of what the enemies look like. For instance, in Dead Space, enemies look like mutated humans with claws and such. In Dead Space 2, you had to fight what resembled mutated babies, which was just straight up creepy. For the most part, in Resident Evil, the enemies just look like eviscerated human beings. Now, when I was younger, that was terrifying. Seeing someone with half their face missing when you're four years old is something that's bound to leave you with nightmares. But now, it's same old, same old. That's where Resident Evil 2 Remake kind of hurts itself though, right? It's a remake. It's literally recreating the wheel into some new HD 1080p 60fps wheel. I mean, it's a better looking wheel, but a wheel is still a wheel. There's no room to make a new scary type of enemy. In the demo at least, but maybe in the actual game? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Also, a thing that can contribute to how scary an enemy is would be how fast an enemy moves. One thing about Resident Evil is zombies are always snail slow. You can literally put your back into a corner and as long as you have moderately good aim, you can just pick them up one by one. However, that was the difference between Resident Evil 4 and the rest. 4 had pretty quick enemies, enemies with different speeds, and at times overwhelming amounts of enemies. One of the first waves within like the first hour of gameplay where you're just being overwhelmed by mobs and chainsaw guys. And you only have like a pistol and maybe a shotgun if you can find it? I don't 100% remember, but I do remember that being one of the most stressful horror game experiences I've had. Because you could very easily trap yourself somewhere and kind of run, overrun, or just run out of ammo. One thing I liked about Dead Space was the pacing of the enemies and numbering of the enemies. Also, I never felt safe in these games for a number of reasons until I actually beat them. But. Like I said in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 7, I could just put myself in a corner, fire away, without having to worry about much. Or just run because the enemies are so slow. The last one, number 3, in my opinion is the most important one for horror games. How much variety is there in the way the game tries to scare me? Now for the entire lifespan of the Resident Evil franchise, I felt they relied on the same things all the time for how they want to scare their audience. They have zombies, zombies eat brains, and some jump scares. That's just not enough anymore. Like yes, I will get caught by some jump scares, as anyone will, but that's not a real fright in my opinion. I can get caught by a jump scare in any game. For instance, if Rengar in League of Legends jumps out of a bush when I'm not expecting it and kills me in one blow. I'll probably jump a bit. I haven't felt any dread of a situation in Resident Evil in a long time. There hasn't been a time really when I looked down the hall and been like, hmm, I don't really want to go there. Now I will admit the bug part in Resident Evil 7 was very unsettling, but that's just because I personally hate bugs. But besides that, no, I haven't actually been afraid of Resident Evil in a long time. Now the flip side of that is Dead Space for me. Dead Space was one of the scariest, most stressful situations I've ever put myself in. Now, what does Dead Space have that Resident Evil 7 didn't and that Resident Evil 2 seemed to not have? A couple of things. For one, Dead Space seems to be very conscious on what they use to scare you. Now you're probably thinking, duh, of course they're conscious about it, they made the game. The thing is, Dead Space uses this to its advantage in a way that Resident Evil franchise just doesn't. They condition you to be ready for certain patterns of how you're going to be scared then totally flip up how they scare you by teasing those patterns later in the game. This effect makes it seem like the enemy has some sort of intelligence because it's like the necromorphs, that's what they call the monsters in Dead Space, have been watching you kill them all game and have been adapting to finally take you down throughout the game. Two. Dead Space is just a viciously gory game. Your protagonist can be cut in half, you can stomp limbs off of dead bodies, the game is just unsettling. That adds to the whole vibe of the game. 3. The way the story is made, which I won't go too far into just in case people want to play the game and haven't, although it's years old, adds even more creepiness to what's going on. Dead Space is just a much harder game to play than Resident Evil. Not even just in difficulty, it's just harder to stomach. And that's the main difference. There was nothing in Resident Evil 7 or Resident Evil 2 demo that made it hard to get through. Nothing that made me want to stop playing because it was just too creepers unsettling. 
the monsters in Resident Evil just seem like an annoying obstacle that keep me from beating the game in a bunch of dark hallways. Where in Dead Space and Resident Evil 4, each map felt like a death trap because the different angles monsters can come from. Now again, to end the video, I don't think Resident Evil 7 was a bad game. I'm not saying Resident Evil 2 won't be terrifying. It very well could be, depending on the improvements they make from Resident Evil 7 and past games. But Resident Evil 7 just wasn't that scary, and if Resident Evil 2 follows in those footsteps, it will have more of the same problems. This isn't really a video about me disliking Resident Evil 2 though, I'm just using Resident Evil 2 to voice my frustration on the mainstream horror titles. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys, even if you don't agree with my point of view, I hope you guys saw and understood my point of view. It's very subjective, and a lot of the things that don't scare me could be terrifying to someone else. But, to me, these things... I just think that the Resident Evil series and a bunch of the other horror games like Prey that came out recently could be a lot more scary than what they actually are. This is King Dot the Seventh signing out. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment your opinions down below. Peace.